everybody and welcome again to yet another edition of the chief auditor series we've been bringing to you people who are eminent people in the in the profession of internal auditing so that we all learn together and i think that was the primary purpose of why this chief auditor series was started by dipji and me the first task which has been given to me is to introduce rajiv gupta to all of us he of course in some sense requires no introduction i was also fortunate to hear him speak very vividly in the icai conference in the national conference at icai bombay very very recently rajiv gupta is an author speaker and a leader in governance and risk management he is currently working as vice president and group head internal audit at flipkart prior to this he worked as senior vice president global audits at diago diago head of internal controls for india and southwest asia of coca cola and assurance manager with pwc in india and london vast international experience i must say he is a chartered accountant cfe cisa ccsa and holds diploma in information systems audit of the icai thoroughly well qualified indeed he is the author of the technical guide on internal audit of the beverage industry which was published by the institute of chartered accountants in december 2013 he is a guest speaker with the icai isaka acfe institute of internal auditors software asset Man management strategy europe and national academy for direct taxes who better person than rajiv to to guide us today through the next 50 minutes or so rajiv all yours thank you so much uh, satish ji and thank you deep ji for for inviting me uh, on this uh, on this platform um i i have gone through you know uh, most of the um, uh, videos on this series and i must say the comprehensiveness of the knowledge sharing which has been done by uh, other functional heads other audit heads uh, and what i have tried to do uh, not to repeat um you know what they have already covered because it was very very comprehensive um and hence i have tried to focus on the delta part primarily and uh, feel free uh, satish ji and uh, uh, deep ji to you know uh, ask me to pause in between instead of uh, waiting till the end so that way uh, we will keep it uh, much more uh, interactive so i i'm sharing my screen now yeah so since uh, since i i am a, a data scientist and i belong to e-commerce industry so you will see that i am i am going to start by saying that the future belongs to data driven organizations yeah uh, and now one may ask raji what does that mean every company has data whether that company runs on sap or it runs on tally so uh, every company is that way data driven so i beg to differ uh, on that because every company has data but every company is not data driven and why i say so because even if you have sap the problem is currently that information which is in the different modules of sap it may be getting used by those respective departments for their benefit so that information currently is getting used in silos and that is why most of the organizations irrespective of whether they are on erp or on you know stand alone accounting systems they all cannot call themselves as a data driven organization data driven organizations are purely the ones who who are taking step back and saying irrespective of the data lying in the you know p2p module or the fico module or the inventory module it is our data and not the functional data and how we can use the company wide data to strategically move ahead as compared to our competitors so when companies take this decision then they become data driven organization and beautiful examples which we have are in the names of uh, you know these ubers of the world olas of the world uh, the amazons and the flipkarts of the world uh, now for example tata has you know tata new through tata new they have come into this journey so uh, and what you see if you open the app what you see is they are trying again to consolidate yeah 
whatever their dif different service offerings were on different platforms, they are bringing it together. Tomorrow, Adani may come in, Reliance anyways is planning to come. So that way, irrespective of the industry to, from which they belong to, companies have understood that future belongs to, to having data and understanding the capability of data. And that is what I call as a data-driven organizations. Now, someone may ask, uh, why, why now? Why we are talking about data-driven organizations now? There are two primary reasons, and there is no rocket science in that. One, obviously COVID, because before COVID, we, we all were, not all, most of us, we used to go out, do shopping ourselves, right? Uh, we never thought that, uh, you know, we can work from home. Some of us were getting uh, maybe the apparels and all those things online, uh, but food, grocery, vegetables, fruits, many of us used to feel, touch it, and then buy it, you know, from the stores. But COVID, you know, made us learn that uh, we can rely on the, um, you know, these data-driven organizations to service us whatever we want at our convenience. So that is what uh, led to the rise of data-driven organization. Second is self-service is on the rise. Now, what I mean by self-service, if I give uh, strategy you an option that there are, suppose you want to buy something, yeah? Uh, if I give you an option that one website is saying you fill up this form and immediately you will get an option to download that particular file yourself. Another option is where you have to write an email to someone and they have a tat of 24 hours to revert to you. In current times, my belief is you would, you would prefer option number one, which is self-service. I, I will fill those four, five, six columns and they're, they're the option of ready to download appears and you're very happy that you have served yourself. And this is what we all are loving these days. We want independence. We want, or I would say self-dependence. And that is why you will see the organizations these days, which are growing exponentially. They are not, they don't necessarily have to be in the heavy industry. They are the ones who are either bringing convenience to the customers or they are bringing digitalization to the customers. There is nothing else. Everybody, that is why, everybody means every business house, uh, that is why is going into digitization. You take latest examples. Just see the beauty of banks, whether you see ICICI, IDFC, uh, HDFC. There are many banks who have become who have picked up digitalization so beautifully. They do video KYC, they do you know, uh, picture-based KYC, they check your Aadhaar, they do everything very diligently at the convenience of your home and at the convenience of any time you want to do, even at 12 in the midnight. You don't have to worry about that. Very right, so, Rajiv. Even the small finance banks, would you and yeah. Kutkarsh and all have done started it. Absolutely. And you see similarly, sir, you see the uh, digitalization or even of the credit cards. You see one card, you see Unicard, you see this card, that card, what they are trying to do. They are trying to bring convenience plus digitalization to the customers. And that's what we love. We love convenience. We love self-service. We love self-dependence. And that is why earlier, when the credit cards for credit cards, you have to fill a form, somebody will come to your home, he will look at the size of your home, he will look at the you know faces of your family members, and then he will say, Okay, I'm approving your card application. Yeah. Uh, but now nothing of that sort. While sitting in this room itself, I can you know get all those formalities done. These type of organizations, whatever we do, uh, uh, they are gonna grow exponentially. And that is why you will see the, the value creation, the growth, what we call as, you know, the growth companies. These are the ones which are going to be the uh, growth companies uh, of the future. Um, and then quickly on a potentially a controversial topic, which is blockchain and the, and the metaverse. So last week I was, uh, you know, uh, giving a presentation to RBI officers. So I had to be very careful because they actually invited me to speak on blockchain. Yeah. Uh, so I had to really balance my, by my messaging, but you know, what I shared with them as well is whether we like it or not, it is going to be a reality. 
Now they ask me, Raji, why you are saying it is going to be a reality? It is going to be a reality because future belongs not to me, not to Deepji, not to Satiji from uh, of you. Future belongs to millennials and Gen Z. Millennials and Gen Z, they love virtual environments. They love your VR, virtual reality and augmented reality headsets. You go to shopping mall, you will see they are already enjoying it. Metaverse is the further next level of AR, VR. So these companies, which you see on the screen, they have realized that in future, if my customer is going to live in Metaverse, what the hell I'm going to do in the real world? I also need to have my consulting office in Metaverse. I need to have my burger selling joint in Metaverse. I need to have my investing investment management you know, branch in Metaverse because my customer is living there. And that is why McDonald's, for example, recently have purchased a plot in one of the Metaverse where uh, a customer who is say playing or working in Metaverse, he can give an order of a burger from the Metaverse itself. And the burger will actually get delivered to his physical location where he is actually sitting and, you know, um, uh, playing in the metaverse world. So now if that is a type of environment in which our either clients or our own companies are going to move, how audit and risk professionals like us can stay away from this, these technologies, because tomorrow when my CEO or my audit committee says, Rajiv, we want to make sure that the interface between metaverse and the real world is working well. Do I have an option of saying that I don't like Metaverse, it's a controversial concept, but the company will say, Baba, I'm operating in that world. And there is a risk which you have to tell me whether that risk is getting mitigated, yes or no. And the, the names of the companies which you see on the screen are only handful because my screen size was limited. If you Google it, any reputed company, not majority, but many of the Fortune 500 companies, they are already investing. In, uh, in the blockchain as well as metaverse. Either they are buying plots, they are building offices, they are organizing concerts, uh, they are opening their showrooms. For example, Samsung has opened their uh, flagship. They have a flagship store uh, in US. They have created a replica of that store in metaverse so that their customers, even today, when they are roaming around in the metaverse, they can explore the products in their uh, flagship store within the metaverse itself. Now, tomorrow, if they start accepting orders from metaverse itself, then who is going to audit? Can tomorrow I can ask my company that I cannot do IT audit of metaverse because I don't understand. So that is the world, that is the reality, that is the world in which we are moving. Whether we like it or not, that is going to be the, uh, the type of environment where we will be asked to audit. Uh, foundations, very strong foundations are being set right now. Same is the case with DeFi, decentralized finance. Whether we talk about you know, banking, whether we talk about insurance, whether we talk about investments, uh, blockchain-based decentralized finance is becoming a reality today. It is not future. In future, it will just increase exponentially. That is the only change which will happen. So today, if, for example, I am auditing an insurance company which is operating in a real world or using a standard ERP. Tomorrow, if that company moves into blockchain, do I have an option of saying, no, I can't do audit of blockchain or I can't audit my company any longer because then the company would have no, no other option but to replace me and hire someone who can audit uh, the insurance industry in the blockchain, because that is where the world is moving and it is a reality. And hence it is, you know, um, it's important for us to, to really appreciate um, uh, what are the, some of the uh, technological changes which are happening around us and how they are going to impact us as the audit and risk professionals. Uh, in next one minute, um, you know, I'm going to share one video uh, and then I will uh, talk about that uh, after that. Share sound. Yeah. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, 
At least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? I am not. So what you just saw was the front end of the video. It was created using deep fake. And uh, the video which is coming up next is the actual making of that deep fake video. This I will just run for maybe 15 seconds just to set the context for the. Next. I am not Morgan Freeman. And what you see is not real. Well. But... So let me take a pause first so that you understand what is happening in this particular screen. See, deep fakes can be created by a combination of two, three things. One, we need a real human being to make a video. So on top, you see, you are seeing the, the, uh, uh, the Hollywood star, uh, Mr. Fremen. But what he's saying, he's not saying. Who is saying that? The person, the, the bald person below, he's the one who is actually making this narrative. So that is step number one. We need a human being, any human being. Secondly, we need a large number of photographs, 360 degree type of photographs of the person whose deep fake has to be created. So, and the, uh, the video clippings of whatever he may have said earlier so that we can pick, you know, not we, the program can pick the, the you know, the eyebrows movement, eyes movement, lips movement, uh, smile, all those things when those words are being said by someone else. So we need someone, we need the headshot and the videos of the person whose deep fake has to be created and few more requirements are there. So that for a layman like you and me, it is very difficult to make out whether this uh, video is real or fake. Who can find out? Uh, someone who is an expert in deep fake, he's the one who can find out that it was created with a uh, deep fake uh, algorithm. So this is the, uh, you know, this is the, you know, as, as he said in this video, it's a syn world of synthetic reality. Why he said synthetic reality? Because in this video, the uh, video of Mr. Fairman has been created using AI and ML. AI and ML needs data. Whatever I said, I said, we need one human being and we need what next? We need his lot of photographs or his videos. What is that? It is data. If we don't have a lot of data, none of these AI and ML algorithms can be successful. And that is how the loop is getting closed. If you want to use best possible use of these technologies, the ultimate uh, ingredient is data. And hence, you will see every organization is moving towards that race. Now, when I make these type of you know comments, when I make this type of points in different forums, you know many of the uh, you know fellow chartered accountants or auditors, they, they you know they make comments like Rajiv. While what you are saying is fine, but we all of us really don't need to adopt, you know, these emerging technologies. We don't really need to understand. Uh, we don't really need to audit. But my point is, if you, my point is, you don't have an option. Uh, these are the these are the technologies which are giving you an opportunity to earn premium in the market. If you don't prepare yourself to earn premium as an auditor or as a risk professional then your your skill set will become as good as a commodity commodity doesn't have differential pricing very similar to filing an itr you cannot say satiji cannot say i have 20 or 30 years of experience of filing itr to give me 10000 rupees an itr is a commodity you cannot ask for premium but if satiji says that I am expert in finding and strategizing risk management in a particular industry. 
Now that is where his wisdom, his knowledge, his experience is valuable. Is carrying premium. Ah, uh, is carrying premium. Not the commodities. So uh, all our, whatever we have learned historically, sooner it will become a commodity, and hence the the differential pricing will go for a toss. Again, why I am saying so? To give you, you know, one more example of that. Cyber security. Yeah. One example of cyber security is the ransomware attacks. Ransomware attacks are not new. They are happening for last many years, at least more than a decade since I, you know, I am aware of them. Earlier, what used to happen? Ransomware attacks. Uh, someone used to write code. He used to throw those, you know, through a, you know distributed me mechanism so that you know tens of thousands of companies can be attacked, and whosoever has weak control, that company will get impacted, and then you can ask for. bitcoins to you know to release their systems now most of the companies are very proactive in putting the right patches right controls and you know blocking the right ports so that these type of attacks doesn't happen so now the hackers they have become smarter they said if everybody is using ai why i am not using ai so in their programming they have brought in the ai power how they have brought in ai power now they are writing a code and when they are pushing that code to different organizations in the world then it is trying to enter for example satish ji's organization but he has put in right control control number 1 so the the uh, ransomware that uh, program will not say ore baba i cannot attack you know i can do i can't do anything in satish ji's organization it will say okay how my other brothers and sisters who were trying to attack other companies anyone has been successful so far if it says oh you know deep ji's company mein we are successful by using option number 4 so that program will try option number 4 in satish ji's organization also all this is happening without coming back to the hacker the program is learning on the go that if my if my formula is failing what else i can do what else my brother and sisters who were trying to attack other companies how they are getting successful or how they are getting failed this is the power of ai which is now getting used in cyber attacks now whatever cyber security we learned for example while doing cisa or disa say 10 years ago will that be useful in today's environment answer is no does that mean those you know, certifications are useless that answer is also no they are useful in setting the base in setting in getting to know know that these things can impact your organization but upskilling is something which we have to manage of our own yeah what are the latest advancements which are happening in in those space yeah um and now when i am talking about the you know premiumization and the commoditization one thing which historically has been proven and there is a research on that and i have intentionally kept you know the name of the uh the website from which uh, i am picking this particular article uh in this article they have very clearly uh, analyzed and researched that any new technology it carries premium for anything between 12 to 15 years it is it is proven historically now ai and ml these technologies they were they got launched somewhere between 2010 or 12 somewhere like that they didn't become that popular that time it's only because of covid these are becoming more popular in last two years so if even if i take 2012 so it means by 2024 or 2025 the premium which these ai and ml technologies which they are carrying that premium will evaporate after that so essentially we have two more years to announce to the world that i am that type of risk professional i am that type of auditor who also knows how to manage risk in ai and ml world and we will be given premium for that but after 2 3 years that will become a basic ask that baba how what type of auditor you are if you don't understand these very similar to if i tell to the world i don't know ms word today i don't know how to make ppt they will see me like a shock after 2 3 years if i make similar comment for ai ml people will look at it with a shock today they will not look at us with a shock today will they say okay you know that very good so you know we'll get a premium in the market 
now some of us may say but rajiv what you are saying is good but uh, i i am not someone who can do coding i don't like programming it's not my cup of tea so again as i said in you know previous slides the world belongs to those organizations which are bringing convenience to the users so there are many not many there are few startups which heard this that some people they are interested in data they are under, interested in data science but they don't really like coding so no code coding is also coming yeah two examples two examples of something which is very close to no code coding are nine k n i m e and altrix they are the ones which are more like drag and drop very similar to i think ms access or something which was there you know 10 15 years ago you drag boxes you connect them with arrows uh, uh, you know so these uh, nime and altrix are very similar to that you don't need to learn python r and all those codings uh, to to uh, do data science uh, using them and i'm sure more uh, uh, such tools will be coming in the near future with much many more startups realizing that people prefer convenience uh they don't want to spend a year in learning you know codings in r python and so on so this problem is also getting solved so many of us who are chartered accountants don't, don't love coding uh, please uh, please go for some any of these tools my understanding is nime is open source uh, you can just go to their website uh, download the software download the manual and you know start exploring it um similarly uh, no, altrix is uh, carries a license and um, yeah so that's on the on the problem of uh, how to take care of the coding part now quickly on uh, you know uh, if this is going to be the world in which we will operate then potentially what how my audit scope will look like so i kept it very very simple i said if tomorrow you going to live in industry 4.0 where you will have cyber security powered by ai cloud mobile technologies 3d printing then your audit will be focused on these only tomorrow you cannot say that rajiv i am going to uh, i have audited these five processes by picking 25 samples each or i have done audit of these processes by doing a duplicate customer master check in my excel file tomorrow companies won't be interested in that they will they will say that these basic checks you can give to the junior most team members but tell me when my factory is a smart factory where everything is interconnected and we and is being managed not by 100 people in that factory but by one person sitting in the head office do i have a risk of that factory getting shut down then my 25 sample checking or my simple data analysis of duplicate customer master duplicate this and all those thing won't give comfort to the stakeholders their their definition of risk their worries of risk are going to change instead of duplicate customers duplicate vendors duplicate gst and all those their worry will be how my rfids are working how my iot is working Uh, can someone attack do a ransomware attack using you know uh, ai based algorithms uh, is my 3d printing working fine if my factory is purely robotic based and there are many examples flipkart is using using robots amazon is using robots and i'm sure there are many companies are using robots uh, then how are different risk which are being taken care is the you know the human safety risk getting taken care right is the um, uh, Uh, adequate testing is happening about those uh, uh, you know robots or not because if they are not adequately tested then things can really go wrong so those are the type of strategic questions relating to risk management our stakeholders are going to ask and hence um, our focus as the leaders uh, leaders in the governance space uh, our focus has to change um and that's how i see the uh, future uh, potential scope of the uh, scope of the audit a uh, quick maybe another uh, you know 4 uh, 5 minutes then uh, if if all these things are happening if these are the technologies coming our stakeholders expectation is changing so what should i do now few things yeah number one let us not be overconfident uh why i'm saying so 
because you know uh, when i go to uh, different forums uh, some people say but rajiv these type of you know ai based attacks will happen only to fortune 500 companies which are selling billions and trillions of dollars of you know, having revenue of that much we are only maybe you know 100 100 million dollar in dollars but the point is when these attacks are being made they are being thrown onto the web in the form of like you know uh, distributed attacks so they don't say they don't select okay let me target company these 500 company they throw it on the internet that whichever company is weak it will get stuck and if it is 100 million dollar company we will ask them lesser amount if it is a billion dollar company we will ask them more amount but any amount we get is a amazing return on investment because the coding was done only once and the revenue will come multiple times whoever is getting hooked you can ask any any value from them so let us not be over confident that we are small they are big they will be attacked we will not be attacked zero trust security model uh, you know you may be hearing it in in more you know in the uh, it security related uh, uh, you know uh, events where we are saying very similar to in finance what we say zero based budgeting let's not say that uh, uh, you know last year we spent 100 million dollars on labor cost let's spend only let's keep it the keep the increment within 2% no let us presume that today we are starting our factory so how much essentially we need to spend on labor zero based budgeting similarly zero trust security where it is also saying by default we will not trust anyone everybody has to prove every port has to prove that it has to be opened and that is where the organizations are moving to take care of the uh, 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 ransomware attacks powered by ai yeah few softer skills you know which i believe uh, we as uh, auditors and risk professionals need to have two of them is on this slide one is conflict management conflict management will increase especially in this hybrid world why because when we are working from home we are alone alone we become more technical and less of social animal and if we become less of social animal tomorrow when we are together the conflicts will arise more i will say what i am saying is right mr b will say what he is saying is right and how to collaborate we would have lost that art because we are working in silos in the hybrid environment and hence conflict management i strongly believe is going to be a very important skill for the not only for leaders even for managers to make sure that um, teams work in a cohesive environment uh, and secondly is storytelling because i i believe that data in itself is maybe 50% of the of the solution remaining 50% is what is the message which is coming out of data uh, what is the narrative you have uh with the with the analysis with the dash with the dashboard which you, which i am presenting on the screen is my ceo and is my board are they supposed to really worry about things going wrong or they are they are they have or they have to believe that things are improving or things are stagnant or so what is the message behind the numbers being thrown with the charts being thrown i think that's an art which has to be learned if there is no specific curriculum you know in our chartered accountancy or any of the professional courses we do uh, and uh, and i i i think this is this is something which is very important for us to again be seen uh, to be differentiated between a field auditor versus a leader um, and i believe uh, you know everybody respective of their grade in the organization deserves uh, to play a, a leader role in their organization uh change management digital skills you know i, I have uh, talked about that potential challenges yeah so you know interestingly you know i i found this uh, year in one of my presentation years ago this was in 2011 in one of the icai conference i made this statement i said a finance professional without reasonable knowledge of technology and data will sooner or later become an impaired asset i made this statement in 2011 for the first time and after that for 3 4 more years i made that statement and then i forgot that and you see in 2022 11 years later i am saying the same thing what i have shown in last half an hour is ex exactly the same you cannot uh, ignore technology you cannot ignore data that time you know people i think clapped on this statement but nothing after, happened after that 
uh, they liked it okay yeah some something fancy is being said but today if you see it is not fancy it is it is the reality the data driven organizations are winning and technology driven organizations are winning so if i have to just conclude now there are two key takeaways which i have for my you know my friends and colleagues in the audit and governance fraternity one is see nobody is expecting us to become expert programmer expert in hacking expert in firewall security nothing of that sort but they expect us number one to be aware that what these newer technology what risk these newer technologies are bringing to the organization and is the right function is it putting the um, right guardrails into the organization that is the very basic ask and secondly is whatever new technology is getting implemented do we understand what are the inherent controls and risk that new technology is bringing yeah so these are some of the basic expectations uh, you know um, the the changing times is expecting from us uh, beyond you know being uh, whatever professional qualification we you know we are carrying whether it is ca whether it is mba or you know whether we are a chemical engineer whether we are a computer engineer it you know it doesn't make any difference the most important thing is are you um, moving as per the times are you getting yourself updated with the technology which your company is adopting or your company is getting exposed to uh, and uh, are you aware reasonably aware of the risks which that technology is bringing on to the table so so broadly uh, you know this this was the delta i wanted to uh, to share uh, i will take a pause here um, uh, satish ji deep ji uh, happy to happy to answer any question sure. uh, great uh, uh, raji uh, throughout this presentation you have presented what should be the road map for a good internal department and for a professional individual in internal audit and i think uh, at the end i'm going to sum this up though it is a very difficult uh, job to sum this up because each slide and each sentence you said you know has got so much of depth uh, but again to put it very simply can you reemphasize uh, my question is for, there are hundreds of you know we come across hundreds of internal auditors or internal departments in the country if we only look at our country india and they are at different levels of maturity right because you belong to the e-commerce company you are maybe are at uh, uh, you know in terms of technology adoption the company as a whole the environment and also the department it moves differently compared to a lot of brick and mortar companies and manufacturing organizations though some of them may also be technologically very advanced and enabled so what's your if you have to just sum up and say what's your advice to internal departments and professional internal auditors to move up the value chain you have talked about it throughout but can you just sum it up and say what are the top 3 things or top 5 things an internal audit internal auditor or an internal audit department needs to do to move up the value chain as we have talked about yeah two three things uh, and those are very basic very easily actionable can be actioned right from tomorrow morning one is uh, start focusing on the it application controls what does that mean it means whatever process whatever entity we are auditing it is 100 uh, it is absolutely impossible that that end to end process is going to be manual not possible in today's world there must be at least one technology one software one platform which is supporting that process do we understand the risks so when we are using that software that platform there must be different steps which are getting performed in that platform do we understand what are the caveat completeness accuracy validity and restricted access related checks built on each step can someone override any of these caveat it is no rocket science normally it is done by it auditors but uh, if if a finance auditor is also given a decent training you don't need to be a csa dsa to do that with a decent one time training and uh, other than sap yeah uh, with decent one time training you can perform many of these checks otherwise um, our audit process may or may not be uh, capturing some of these system risks uh, uh, you know coming from that software so that is one secondly uh, 
ITGC, IT General Controls, I believe, um, has to be tested in the first half of the year. And it has to be tested before the finance auditors come into picture. Now, why I'm saying so? Because I strongly believe that IT audit findings contribute to the finance audit. If I find that the configuration, you know, the configuration management of SAP is weak, the change management of my system is weak, and anybody other than administrator, he or she can also open the environment to make the changes. Then whatever reports which I'm using to do my audit, the reports which I'm downloading from that system, ideally my finance audit team should not be relying on that because the change management is not controlled. Right. Yeah, But in many organizations, the challenge comes that either finance audit and ITGC is happening parallelly or ITGC is happening later because it's a one-time activity. So, you know, sometimes it is scheduled in such a manner that it happens during the year, but after that process is getting audited. So it is of no use because finance auditor has also already completed his task of relying on that report. And later on, he's getting to know Baba, that system from which that report got generated. I cannot rely on the system. Now what he will do? He has already released his audit report. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very uh, tricky situation uh, the auditor can come into, uh, into. The third is making use of you know, data. Now, I strongly believe that as companies you know, go on to the maturity curve, the very first automation they can bring is moving beyond Excel. Yeah? Using tools, you know, these uh, automation tools like IDEA, uh, ACL, Alteryx, because these are not so difficult to use. You learn, you know, you go through the, the manuals or training manual, which is in the help section of these tools. You just go through and chartered accountants, you know, are very, very sharp. Uh, we don't need uh, months of training. So one half day training is sufficient for us to start making sense of these, uh, you know, advanced tools. So I think as, um, and these are quick fixes. We don't need six months, a year of planning. Tomorrow itself, just get that tool, get a license, one license, not expensive and uh, start um, utilizing the power of the, uh, the capability of these tools to have a 3D view of your data. Um, and in that, you know, um, what I am very fond of and I have implemented in my company is uh, our two set of analysis and it is independent of the tool. Uh, those are um, uh, univariate and bivariate analysis. These are very simple. Um, these are um, uh, visual, visual analysis, and uh, you can implement them tomorrow itself. They give you a hell lot of visibility of what exactly is going in the process which I'm auditing. Um, and that can be a good starting point even to define the scope of audit um, in terms of where the number of red flags I'm seeing. So this is the master recipe, univariate analysis and bivariate analysis. And you don't need to be a data scientist going forward uh, to perform this. Anybody can do it. Just Google what does these means. And uh, with basic analysis, analytic understanding, anybody can do it. So these are my three uh, suggestions to quickly move to the next level of auditing. Sure. Great. Satish. Rajiv, it was a real, real lesson, I would say, in, in, the, in, the, in what the future holds for us. And I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I have one question considering my age, you know. Uh, you gave a very beautiful example of McDonald uh, working in, and Samsung working in the metaverse space. You also said that what we have learned till now uh, will become a commodity and commodity pricing is, 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 is uniform. So you don't get a premium. I think they, they really touched me. Uh, so how does one, at, at, you know, there is some diffidence, you know, whenever there is something, the word technology comes very naturally. I mean, and I'm speaking from my own uh, experience and I'm not casting aspersions on anybody, but uh, there is some resistance to really get into all these kind of terms. So how does one uh, motivate or how does one feel excited? It is exciting, but how does one feel excited to get to get your hands dirty in this? Uh, I think uh, 
very good uh, question satish ji and i i think with the discussions like these which we are having right now i will give an example uh, uh, i met um, i think it is nilesh r you know our uh, cats uh, uh, i think the uh, uh. chief internal auditor so i met him few months ago in mumbai and uh, we were having chat and you know he got to know that i am a data scientist he asked me same question satish ji which you asked that and then i just encouraged him i, I said uh, it's not difficult go for it 11 months but you will be in a absolutely different world going forward i met him last week yeah in national conference national yeah, yeah conference. we were there uh, yeah yeah rajiv right rajiv. yeah uh, rajiv is rajiv from cet not rajiv re no 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 not pankaj, rajiv pankaj pankaj no 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 not pankaj pankaj kumar okay. no sorry not cet sorry i am get mis mistake uh, uh. it was nilesh I, i will i will share the name okay no problem sure, so sure. it's not not of cet so pankaj uh, is of cet right. so uh, so he, the moment he met me in the, on the lunch break he immediately you know informed that rajiv yes you encouraged me and i got myself enrolled and uh, i am now learning python coding so that's and he was very excited he said yes it is difficult but you know maybe a couple of months then he will get hang of it um and then uh, i met you know another um, uh, colleague who is in, uh, into audits i had talked about data science few months ago and he met me and he said yes he also enrolled so i think with more these type of discussions where you know we talk about premiumization commoditization it is no longer a luxury no it is no longer a an optional thing optional. the moment we talk, start you know having more such discussions i think people will more and more of our colleagues will come on to this bandwagon that um whatever we have learned is the foundation but we have to build on that foundation to keep carrying the uh, the premium in the market so rajiv i am i am all, always say that uh, you you are the torch bearer for this please please make take this profession to the next level thank Definitely. you so much thanks for your kind words sir sure. uh, i think rajiv since uh, we are short of time because i think you have another appointment i know you had sent me oh, this okay. so i am going to sum it up now instead of okay. asking more questions you know so Uh, otherwise, it would have been such a pleasure to talk to you, you know. For a Deep but anyway, so some other Deep time. One, one, one minute, if if Rajiv. Please, 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 Satish. You, uh, you also talked about deep fake, and I seen this uh, video earlier when you were uh, in the ICI conference. Do you see frauds increasing because of this deep deep fake? I mean, very quick one. I know you're sure, uh, sure. in time for a meeting. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely, uh, and thanks for asking that. Uh, and that was the reason I included that because. uh the frauds are definitely increasing and in uh, one attempt was made in one of my previous organizations itself oh. with the uh, where a voice message uh of the ceo of one of the markets that voice oh. message was sent to one of the um the cfo of that market or the controller of that market asking for re- release of early payment ah, that, vendor exactly what i was thinking yeah. it it is in google it's available on google you search it you will find it it's a public news and uh, uh, and these attempts have been made with various celebrities also hollywood stars as well uh, which is creating a lot of you know uh, co- increasing the cost on the litigation side as well because now they are supposed to hire a deep fake expert mm. who will give a certificate that no this video or this you know also in political circle this can be yeah. a problem especially during the you know the, uh, the election times where you know you can get this type of video created for you know your your uh, opposition and can create a lot of you know challenge political unrest in in the uh, in the system so these are happening uh, few cases i myself i am aware of uh, with the names of the people who were targeted and if you google it uh, satish ji you will find uh, many more cases so mm-hmm. and the beauty is this is going to increase unfortunately why because these are open source softwares if these are available free of cost anybody can download and do that and hence the return on investment is amazing if you create any such video your cost is zero even if you get you know 1 crore that's a good roi okay so we i hope we keep meeting but uh, after 6 months i also wish to tell you that are even i have got into this line and Super. i will give I, you have the credit for it Super. Tadipu. My, but so, my Rajiv, pleasure. I'll take five minutes or three to five minutes to sum it up. Uh, a very difficult job because I don't know what to leave out. But okay, uh, this is what you spoke, which is very useful to auditors. One is you emphasized on data, a data-driven organization, 
So the definition is very clear that one that uses effectively and consistently utilizes the for decision making purposes across the organization, not just having an ERP, but really utilizes that data which is there. Self services on the rise. Uh, growth will be driven by digitalization and connectivity. Millenniums and next gen, they are going to drive the change which is going to happen in terms of blockchain, AI, ML, you know, choices which are made and so on. Uh, we are living in a world of synthetic reality. So we are talking about AI, ML. And again, data is the backbone for that because the more the data, the more you can build better models in AI and ML because everything is dependent on data. So a, a huge database would make a huge, a better AI, ML, uh, you know, perfect decisions going towards perfection. Yes. Uh, no option to auditors, but to adopt all this technology in terms of understanding, in terms of identifying the risk which you know, Rajiv clearly put out, you need not be an expert, but what is important is to identify the risk, to identify what is the underlying technology. And of course, he gave examples. You know, uh, if you go through the video, you'll find examples where he talked about end to end, you know, looking at the uh, process in terms of what technology, how confidentiality, identification, you know, uh, completeness, access controls, and so on. So he talked about all those things, which is important for an auditor because today this knowledge about AIML, this knowledge about blockchain, this knowledge about auditing is premium, which will become commoditized. So he's talking about 2024, but okay, there are cycle times from history that we have seen, you know, last 50 years, if you have seen, we have seen adoption of computers, there was a cycle time. And after yes. that, you know, a laptop, there was a cycle time, mobile phones, there was a cycle time. And now AIML, again, there will be cycle time before the knowledge becomes a commodity. And exactly. then of course, there will be the next, you know, uh, inflection point, you know, next, jump which will happen in terms of the technology so i think it is important that people get into it there is no need to bother you can directly jump into by using some tools some technology understanding getting certifications getting yourself exposed to applications and understanding but at the same time there are open source programs which one, one can latch on to and they can start using them of course there's a whole lot of uh, uh, industry 4.0 we talked about the technology Beautiful. pillar technological pillar which is there uh, one important thing which you talked about which i want to speak about is zero trust security model uh, as auditors i think even in a brick car motor setup this is very important because i am reminded of i read it somewhere edward demings years back when he said in god i trust and rest rest always. should bring their data yeah, so, yeah. I, I, so, so you know <laughs> <laughs> that was almost 40, 50 years back when there was no computers. He yes. talked about that because, of course, from Japan, you know, he, he, he made a, he, he transformed Japan with his quality movement. So, you know, again, looking at data, looking at statistics. So uh, this phrase, you know, I should be there on the T-shirt of every auditor that in God, I trust, rest, bring your data. So, uh, you know, Super. Very well uh, said. then there are specific skills, which we talked, which Rajiv talked about is conflict management. Storytelling, very important. In fact, we can have sessions and sessions on storytelling because that would change the face of internal audit, how internal audit communicates with the stakeholders. Because, you know, the perception of internal audit and how they communicate and get things implemented would change with storytelling because that's very important art which needs to be imbibed or inculcated by the internal auditors and the internal audit department. Of course, change management and digital skills we have talked about. So I think with all these, uh, what is important, what Rajiv has clearly brought about is that there needs to be a mindset change. There needs to be moving towards, you know, adopting new skills yeah. uh, by the internal auditor, which will benefit the organization and the internal auditor themselves. You know, they will benefit themselves. It will be a self-benefit, you know, and of course, the organization will also benefit. So, uh, Rajiv, thank you very much for this excellent oh. session. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, and I think uh, uh, I've heard you in the national conference. I heard you today. I heard you before that. Thank you very much. Really wonderful. And I think it will go a long way uh, for the auditors to you know learn from you. Thank you. My ple pleasure is all mine. Uh, thank you so much for inviting. And it's always a pleasure, you know, interacting with you know with the seniors like like both of you. We in this in this we learn from each other. We we share our you know our experiences, what we have seen. Uh, so thank you so much once again for inviting me for this discussion. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.